Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Andrew Kierkoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're talking about my Week 16 wide receiver rankings for the 2021 fantasy football season. On today's episode, of course, we're covering all topics related to the wide receiver position, beginning with matchups. We'll talk about which defenses are giving up the most points to opposing wide receivers in a half PPR scoring format between Weeks 8 through 15 in order to give ourselves the most overall perspective as to who has the most advantageous matchups going into Week 16. Because, of course, the entire purpose of this week is just to win. Win, baby, win, and get us to Championship Sunday. With so many injuries and so many different circumstances, of course, plaguing our rosters, it's extremely vital to understand the variety of prospects that you could potentially go pick up and start this upcoming week to help you win. Of course, after we talk about matchups, we'll then transition to our top 36 wide receiver rankings, and hopefully there will be players not only on your roster but potentially available on the list in order for you to go ahead, pick them up, put them in your roster this week if, in fact, something is to happen. And that's the entire point. We're just trying to survive and try to put together the best overall roster, but hopefully today's video will kind of give you guys some perspective as to how I think the wide receiver position is going to stack up when it's all said and done by the end of week 16, and hopefully as we are advancing to the next round of our fantasy playoffs. Now, before today's video begins, of course, I want to talk about some waiver wire pickups. Yesterday, of course, we had you know four different teams play two different games, uh, the game between the Seattle Seahawks and, of course, the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, in terms of waiver wire pickups in that game, there was nothing uh, truly noted. Honestly, the, the only thing you have to make sure you do is to keep Sonny Michel on roster based on the amount of opportunity he had. Uh, you don't want to drop him. On the other side of the football, I mean, the Seattle Seahawks, nothing too interesting there. But in the other game, there was something interesting to keep an eye on. Obviously, Boston Scott had no opportunity in that backfield. He could pretty much be dropped going forward. But Jared Patterson, probably the most valuable prospect from yesterday's games. Obviously, with the injury that, you know, Antonio Gibson sustained yesterday, the toe injury that has obviously bugged him for the last two years here. Jared Patterson came in, was able to find some opportunity and find the end zone. So if in fact you are in need of a running back going into this upcoming weekend's matchups, you could potentially pick him up later tonight. Uh, but outside of that, the players that I mentioned on Monday continue as such and go after them. Thank you very much. All right. Now that we've covered that, again, I want to remind you guys, if you guys have not yet already, subscribe to the channel, click the like button down below, definitely to support the channel. And of course, if you have not yet already, go ahead and check out Underdog Fantasy. There's a link down in the description for those of you who are looking to play in a variety of fantasy contests outside of your own respective leagues and continue to keep the fantasy season going even after your Week 17 championships and after you bring home the 2021 title. You know, of course, sign up with Underdog. Use promo code Andrew today. Of course, Underdog's willing to match up to $100 of your first deposit. You guys know I always talk about it in the regard of going out and drafting a team for a Thursday night contest or for the Sunday Royales. Again, there's a lot of opportunity there. If you go ahead and just use my rankings as such and go ahead and approach these drafts, you can find a lot of value there and potentially win some money. For those of you who are interested, again, link is down in the description. Use promo code Andrew today. Thank you very much. All right, let's talk about week 16 at the wide receiver position, beginning with matchups. Again, like I typically do, I want to give you guys a full breakdown as to how bad some of these defenses have been against opposing wide receivers and you can see it as such on the screen the Minnesota Vikings Atlanta Falcons Houston Texans they are the easiest matchups going into this weekend's games as they're each giving up 30 plus fantasy points to opposing wide receivers in a half PPR scoring format again typically meeting everyone in the middle whether you do play in a full PPR or a standard scoring format that's why we do it as such but either way in terms of matchups we obviously want to go after those three teams the Los Angeles Rams will have the privilege of taking on the Minnesota Vikings the Detroit Lions Amon Ross St. Brown Josh Reynolds, they have caught fire as of late. They'll take on the Atlanta Falcons. The Houston Texans, they'll have their hands full with Mike Williams. Of course, Jalen Guyton, but most importantly, Keenan Allen. Uh, if, in fact, you know Austin Eckler is going to be absent in that game, they could have even more value. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, of course, we have the New England Patriots, the Buffalo Bills, both teams taking on one another. The Philadelphia Eagles and that secondary is greatly improved from last season. And even in comparison to earlier this season, Darius Slay certainly leading the pack there and getting them to the next level as they continue to have great performances. Either way, just wanted to show these statistics to you guys. We'll refer back to these rankings as we progress through the video, but wanted to go ahead and show you guys how the matchups are going to potentially stack up going into week 16. Now that we've covered that, let's go ahead and let's talk about our top 36 wide receiver rankings. Again, rankings are subject to change. There are going to be a variety of injuries or a variety of players that may look like they're going to end up playing, but as soon as we get to Sunday, it could be a completely different scenario and narrative. We'll just keep an eye on it. Every Sunday morning, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I live stream here on the channel, kick off with Kirikov with updated rankings for all four primary positions, and I even talk about some defenses and kickers for those of you interested, trying to help you guys out. If you're interested, come on by Sunday morning. I'll be here. Thank you very much. All right, let's get into it, shall we? We're talking about our top 36 wide receivers, and typically, you are starting these players, and I don't think I need to say anything other than, wow, 
Cooper Cup, the best wide receiver in fantasy, the guy that has already eclipsed over 300 fantasy points coming off a 30-point fantasy week, he takes on the easiest matchup at the wide receiver position. Congratulations for those of you who have Cooper Cup. We'll see you in championship Sunday next week because he's going to carry you there. Thank you very much. All right, moving on. We have Devontae Adams as our number two. Taking on the Cleveland Browns, I'm not really too worried about the matchup. It's just a matter of whether Devontae Adams is going to have himself the explosive performance or the mid-range performance. That's what we saw last week with 13.4 fantasy points. Honestly, I don't really care. Devontae Adams starts either way. He was coming off of three consecutive 100-yard games. He, of course, scored a touchdown this last week. He's the number three overall wide receiver in terms of fantasy points per game on average in a half PPR scoring format. I think he'll be able to dominate regardless of what is in front of him, which is Cleveland this week. Moving on, we have Tyreek Hill as our number three. Again, we don't know whether or not Tyreek Hill is going to play, but I wanted to kind of give you guys an expansive look at if, in fact, Tyreek Hill isn't going to play this week, then we have a little bit of a backup plan. In 2019, Tyreek Hill missed weeks one through five. Obviously, in week one against the Jacksonville Jaguars, many of us remember it. He went down with an injury. Sammy Watkins came and had an explosive three-touchdown performance. But in his absence from weeks one through five, in terms of the performances we saw from other Kansas City Chiefs wide receivers, yes, Travis Kelsey was there, and we don't know whether or not he's going to play. But in that amount of time, I wanted to go ahead and break down how many points some of these other wide receivers are scoring. Sammy Watkins in that five-week span was averaging 12.8 fantasy points per game. Demarcus Robinson averaging 10.9 fantasy points per game. And McCole Hardman averaging 8.1 fantasy points per game in that five-week span. If we're in an opportunity in which we have Tyreek Hill out this week, maybe go ahead, pick up the next best wide receiver in this respective offense. If it is a McCole Hardman, if it is a Byron Pringle, and go ahead and take advantage of the opportunity of getting a wide receiver off the waivers, whether or not you even have Tyreek Hill. Either way, if Tyreek Hill is playing, by all means, he's starting against Pittsburgh. I don't care that they have Joe Hayden back. The fact of the matter is Tyreek Hill is one of one. He is his cheetah for a reason, and he'll dominate any secondary at any moment. Moving on, we have Justin Jefferson as our number four. I mean, this is a player that has scored a touchdown in three consecutive contests. Of course, since week 10, he's the number one overall wide receiver in fantasy, averaging 20.44 fantasy points per game and averaging 11 targets per game since week 10. Of course, with Adam Thielen coming back into the lineup, there could be a potential in which his consecutive streak of touchdowns disappears, but we're hoping that's not going to be the case, mainly because Adam Thielen has scored 10 touchdowns in the 11 games that he has fully played. Obviously, the last one he played, he left with an injury with the ankle, but if, if Adam Thielen is in the lineup, there is a potential in which we could see a little bit of a lesser touchdown upside down in the red zone for Justin Jefferson, but either way, he's starting in my lineup. Moving on to our number five, we have Debo Samuel of the San Francisco 49ers. Man, I don't even understand what is happening in San Francisco, but I love every bit of it. The fact that Debo Samuel is pretty much a primary running option in comparison to what he does in the receiving game is unbelievable. I mean, what I heard this week is that he doesn't even attend running back meetings. He just is a wide receiver for this team, and that's it, purely. But he's able to get into the game and just kill it when he's given the opportunity in the running game. Specifically, in the last five games that he has played, he has had 33 rushing attempts for 247 rushing yards and six rushing touchdowns. That's 12.14 fantasy points per game just off of rushing statistics alone. When you're getting that kind of an influx on top of the fact that you'll take on the Tennessee Titans secondary that has certainly been struggling all season, there's a great opportunity for a player like Debo Samuel to have another incredible performance on Thursday night. Moving on to our number six, we have Keenan Allen. Look, Keenan Allen has been unbelievable as of late. In the last seven games of the 2021 season that, of course, Keenan Allen has been active, he's been averaging 15.9 fantasy points per game. In that span of time, he's been averaging double-digit targets, and that's pretty much all we've been waiting for. Opportunity leading to success for Keenan Allen, and that's what we've seen. He takes on the third easiest matchup at the position, going against the Houston Texans secondary. I think this is going to be a one-sided affair, and if, in fact, Austin Eckler is going to be missing a lot of the targets that respectively go in his direction will be going down I mean sure could go to Justin Jackson or Joshua Kelly but I think the check down game will be dominated by Keenan Allen moving on to our number seven we have Antonio Brown again with Mike Evans most likely missing with Chris Godwin out for the rest of the season with Leonard Fournette going to the injured reserve most likely according to Adam Schefter there really opens up an opportunity here for targets in the Tampa Bay offense. Of course, we're going to see Rob Gronkowski get his. We're going to see running backs get their targets. But is Tyler Johnson, Scotty Miller, Brashad Perriman, are they going to be able to contest with the potential of Antonio Brown? And I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Antonio Brown is going to be funnel targeted by Tom Brady. We've seen it in seasons past. I mean, we saw it earlier this year. In the four games that he has seen seven or more targets from Tom Brady, Antonio Brown is averaging 19.7 half PPR fantasy points per game. He's the number six overall wide receiver in fantasy this year in terms of fantasy point per game average. 
He has just been unstoppable. And though you may be concerned about Stephon Gilmore covering him, we know Gilly Lock is one of the better corners in the National Football League for the Carolina Panthers. But just this last week, he gave up himself four receptions, 60 yards, and two receiving touchdowns, one to Gabriel Davis and the other to Stephon Diggs. There's a lot of potential in which Antonio Brown, with Tom Brady looking in his direction, is going to find a lot of fantasy point upside here. Moving on to our number eight, we have Jamar Chase. Now, I understand for those of you who had Jamar Chase last week, maybe you're not even in the playoffs or in the running anymore because of how horrible his performance was. He didn't catch a ball till the third quarter. He had one catch for literally three yards. And yes, it was extremely underwhelming, but I think the matchup this week will certainly shift the tides as they take on the Baltimore Ravens. Again, the Baltimore Ravens, they had their hands full with Devontae Adams, Marquez Valdez-Scantling last week. I think they'll similarly have a little bit of difficulty stopping players like Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. Jamar Chase, the last time he took on the Baltimore Ravens in Week 7, he had himself eight catches for 201 receiving yards and one receiving touchdown. We all know how great the Baltimore Ravens' run-stop defense is, only allowing 3.73 yards per carry. There's a potential in which this Cincinnati Bengals offense turns to throwing the ball heavily and turns in the direction of getting the ball to their playmaker Jamar Chase moving on to Brandon Cooks our number nine and the thumbnail for today's video listen Brandon Cooks has been incredible with Davis Mills and as of late I mean in the 10 games that Davis Mills has played for the Houston Texans and been the starter for this team you know overall Brandon Cooks has been a decent wide receiver averaging 12.75 fantasy points per game in those contests averaging just about six and a half receptions 70 receiving yards and 0.5 receiving touchdowns in those games overall pretty decent but in the last three games that Davis Mills has started for the Houston Texans Brandon Cooks has been nuclear he's averaged 19.03 fantasy points per game when Davis Mills has been under center of course this last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars the week prior against the Seattle Seahawks and in a couple weeks back prior to Tyrod Taylor's return against the Los Angeles Rams in which Brandon Cooks has been a touchdown machine and has seen an incredible volume of targets from his respective quarterback I think the value continues to go up I'm not too worried about the Los Angeles Chargers matchup I think Brandon Cooks is an automatic play as a top 12 this week. Moving on, we have C.D. Lamb. You know, I don't really trust the Dallas Cowboys offense. They are not able to score enough points offensively to make them have a wide variety of players that you can trust. It's either one week it's C.D. Lamb or the other week it's Zeke. The next week it's Amari Cooper. The next week it's Dalton Schultz. Not everyone is going to score in a given week, but hopefully, just hopefully, we're holding out for hope, C.D. Lamb can get back on track. And though he's been able to get himself a great volume of targets and been able to be exposed to this kind of opportunity, it really hasn't clicked in terms of finding the end zone. Hasn't scored a touchdown in the last three games, but at least his yardage and receptions has gotten to that point where he's at least pivoting or at least turning the corner of getting to 10 fantasy points per week. All he needs is a touchdown to get to that next level, and I'm hoping this is the week in which he's able to do so. Moving on to Deontay Johnson, or number 11, taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, we talked about it last week. Uh, Deontay Johnson, when he's getting 10-plus targets, which he, which he typically does almost every game, he's incredible. But last week, five targets, five catches, 38 yards was pretty much a non-factor in the matchup against the Tennessee Titans, which honestly, he should have been a factor considering how bad the Pittsburgh Steelers were in terms of running the ball. Claypool didn't get much opportunity, and really the defense just had to win them that game. All in all, a couple penalties here and there served in their favor. But the reason why Deontay Johnson sits here is purely based on his consistency this season. He's the number seven overall wide receiver in fantasy point per game average, and we're going to hope that his consistency continues to ride as he approaches this upcoming weekend's matchup against Kansas City. Moving on to our final of the wide receiver ones, it is Stephon Diggs. Again, another wide receiver that we have to trust based on the fact of who he is. He is just a you know wide receiver one caliber guy every single week. He has the potential of achieving that regardless of the matchup. I mean, there's a reason why he was still able to score a touchdown last week, 11 and a half fantasy points against the Carolina Panthers. We'll probably have J.C. Jackson along with safety help over the top, double covering him this upcoming week against the New England Patriots. But even with that, with the respect of getting double coverage, I think there's a possibility in which Stephon Diggs is going to have an impactful enough week to where we have to have him in our lineups going into week 16. Now that we've covered our top 12, of course, we'll transition to our number 13. Talking about Tyler Lockett, hopefully, who will be returning this week because, boy, did the Seattle Seahawks need him. They'll take on the Chicago Bears. And this last week, of course, the Chicago Bears secondary didn't really have many of their players considering they were out. And they were still able to pl play pretty decently against you know uh, Justin Jefferson and K.J. Osborne. Even when they get their starters back, I'm not too worried about it. The fact of the matter is Tyler Lockett has been incredible with Russell Wilson, averaging 16.4 fantasy points per game in the last four games that they have played together. Tyler Lockett 
continues to get his opportunity, continues to have high upside games, and that is why he sits at number 13. Moving on to Jalen Waddle, who will also hopefully be back this week. The appeal of Jalen Waddle is very similar to the appeal of Tyler Lockett. These are two wide receivers that are, you know, slot players are obviously the favorite targets for their respective quarterbacks and continue to see a wide volume of overall opportunity. I mean, in the last three games that Jalen Waddle has played with Tua, he's gotten 30 total targets. I mean, those 30 total targets have led to an 18.1 fantasy point per game average in the last three contests. Of course, Jalen Waddle is going to be in our lineups. And as long as he continues to put up great performances with Devontae Parker, obviously finding himself success last week, will pull coverage and let Jalen Waddle dominate against the opposing secondary of the New Orleans Saints, giving up the eighth most points to wide receivers this season in the last eight weeks. Moving on to T. Higgins at number 15. Now, in the same conversation, in the same vein, of why we're trusting Jamar Chase based on the matchup. Of course, the Baltimore Ravens giving up the fourth most points to opposing wide receivers. I understand you may be upset about the performance that T. Higgins put forth last week, but understand that against the Baltimore Ravens in week seven, this man garnered 15 total targets. And that's when they had Marlon Humphreys and they had a fully healthy and you know ready to go secondary. Right now, their defense is a shell of itself. And in comparison to what we've seen that defense be in the past, I mean, they had to literally double cover Devonta Adams the entire game. They literally had a safety just shadowing him on top of a corner shadowing him. And they just double covered him the entire game and they still couldn't stop Devontae Adams from finding the end zone. Just putting that in perspective. And on the other side of the field, regardless of what Devontae Adams had to deal with, Marquez Valdez-Scantling went off. And hopefully, the Marquez Valdez-Scantling role will kind of transition to T. Higgins. I think he's going to have himself a great opportunity this week to have an upside play. Hopefully, Tyler Boyd doesn't play upset special like last week. Moving on to Gabriel Davis, our number 16. Listen, Gabriel Davis is, of course, a guy that needs to be picked up off waivers. I've been saying this for the last couple weeks here. But coming off of a week in which he had 23 fantasy points, I understand that you may be concerned about the New England Patriots you know, matchup, considering they have been the best defense in terms of stopping opposing wide receivers as of late. But let's just put this into account. Gabriel Davis has scored four touchdowns in the last three games. One of those touchdowns against the New England Patriots uh, back in week 14. So obviously we have a little bit of a track record there. But not only that, there's a potential this week. For sure we know that Cole Beasley's not playing. But also, if Emmanuel Sanders misses a second consecutive week, and when they're taking on the New England Patriots, which we know J.C. Jackson will be you know, heavily covering Stephon Diggs, and we know that Bill Belichick wants to shut down opposing tight ends. There goes Dawson Knox. The only other option is Gabriel Davis or Devin Singletary, which makes me think Gabriel Davis absolutely is a fantastic play this week in an offense that will try to avenge the last time they took on the New England Patriots defense. Moving on to Hunter Renfro. Again, it's a matter of consistency. Hunter Renfro has been consistent, I mean, for the last seven games here. He's been averaging 13.31 fantasy points per game, and though he didn't have himself a great performance this last Monday against the Cleveland Browns, I still think it's a matter of whether or not he gets that opportunity. And with Darren Waller probably leading to him most likely not playing this week, the immediate thought that I have in my mind is, well, Hunter Renfro could very easily go for seven catches, 90 yards, and a touchdown. And that's what we're hoping for. And he has done that on a consistent basis in the last couple of weeks. He's really only had two you know, below 10 fantasy point performances in the last seven games. That kind of consistency you very rarely see, especially from guys at this caliber on that kind of a team. For right now, Hunter Renfro, a must play as we continue. Moving on, Amon Ross St. Brown, another one of these, you know, consistent wide receivers and has caught fire as of late. This is a player that is averaging 16.87 fantasy points per game in the last three contests that he has played. The only question in regards to Amon Ross St. Brown isn't the matchup, isn't the opportunity, because boy, is he getting that uh, over 30 targets in the last three games, has the second easiest matchup of the wide receiver position. The only question is whether or not Jared Goff plays. If Jared Goff is not playing, then I don't trust Amon Ross St. Brown at this capacity. But if, in fact, you know Jared Goff clears and he's able to play this upcoming weekend, then by all means, Amon Ross St. Brown, he is in my lineup. And he's my number 18 wide receiver. Moving on to Russell Gage, another wide receiver that has caught fire as late, and we cannot ignore the potential in which he is just completely going nuclear. With the absence of Calvin Ridley, the whole question has been, where are we going to see production from the wide receiver position out of the Atlanta Falcons? And though we thought initially it was going to be the potential of Kyle Pitts taking it to the next level, it really hasn't been able to flourish in that regard. But boy, I mean, Russell Gage has been a sneaky, incredible player. I thought earlier this season, even weeks one and two, he was a hidden gem for me because I thought he would take over by then. 
he would be able to just come in and be a great overall option for this offense. But it took him a while. And, you know, better late than never, I'll take it. Russell Gage coming off of a week of 19 fantasy points in the last four games, averaging 14.8 fantasy points per game and a half PPR scoring format. Whether or not he's scoring touchdowns, he's finding fantasy relevance. He's continuing to stay in my lineup. Moving on to A.J. Brown, our number 20. Listen, I don't know what to expect from A.J. Brown. He's coming off the injured reserve. If he's able to fully practice today, uh, along with Julio Jones, there is a potential where we have A.J. Brown having a great game against the San Francisco 49ers secondary that can certainly be taken advantage of. I mean, there's a reason why Russell Gage is going out here mossing wide receivers in the back of the end zone and scoring touchdowns on the San Francisco 49ers. Why not A.J. Brown? I mean, he is a possession wide receiver. He is a guy that can make plays after the catch. The thing that I wanted to mention... Hopefully Julio's healthy because I certainly do believe that AJ Brown has a little bit more you know leeway against the secondary that he won't, won't be able to potentially double cover him as much. I mean this season already in the games in which AJ Brown has played with Julio Jones, he's averaging 12.2 fantasy points per game. I'm just hoping that he's healthy and ready to go because if he really is, we can honestly see a 25 point performance. It could come out of nowhere because that is the caliber of receiver that AJ Brown is. I know the last time we saw him, he wasn't there, but hopefully we'll be able to recover and get him back on track this week. Moving on to Adam Thielen, another wide receiver that we're hoping is healthy and playing this week. He almost gave it a go on Monday. He you know, kind of warmed up prior to the game. Obviously, still wasn't ready to go. He was limited earlier today at practice. And if he is in a full capacity this week, taking on the Los Angeles Rams, I think that the, of course, Minnesota Vikings are in desperate need of his services. You know, K.J. Osborne wasn't really much of a factor. Kirk Cousins was falling apart in this offense. He needs his security blanket back. And I understand he wants to get the ball to Justin Jefferson, but he can't do that every play. He needs to find another receiving option, considering Tyler Conklin pretty much disappeared. The running game wasn't as effective. Adam Thielen is going to be a major part. I mean, in the 11 games that he played this season fully prior to his injury, he was averaging 14.57 fantasy points per game. He scored 10 touchdowns in those 11 games. This is back-to-back seasons of double-digit touchdowns. We can continue to lean in the direction of Adam Thielen. Moving on to our number 22, we have Marquise Hollywood Brown. Now, regardless of who's at the quarterback position, whether it is Tyler Huntley or Lamar Jackson, I think a lot of success will be had here. Of course, Tyler Huntley targeted Marquise Brown 14 times for 10 receptions, 43 yards. I don't even care about the yardage. The fact that you're able to get that many receptions will continue to just build your overall fantasy baseline and then the touchdown will eventually accompany that and get him to the next level. Of course, the Cincinnati Bengals are dealing with some injuries in their secondary, and that is certainly going to be something that I'm keeping my eye on. But Marquise Hollywood Brown, I mean, the last time he took on the Cincinnati Bengals in Week 7, had himself 16.5 fantasy points in which he was able to get double-digit targets, a good amount of receptions, and a receiving touchdown. I think he'll certainly be able to duplicate a similar performance, hopefully this week, regardless of the quarterback play. Moving on to DJ Moore, our number 23. Against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he has found a lot of success in his career. And I understand the quarterback position, whether it ends up being Cam Newton or, you know, P.J. Walker, Sam Darnold, whoever it ends up being for the Carolina Panthers, I think there can be success found here considering how bad the Tampa Bay secondary has been considering the injuries that they've had to deal with week in and week out. Taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I mean, the last four times he's played against them, he's had himself four catches, 96 and a touchdown, eight catches for 120, seven catches for 86, and nine catches for 89. He always puts together great performances, and I'm hoping that we're going to see something very similar this upcoming week. He's coming off of a game in which he had 11 total targets. Unfortunately, he's still dealing with a little bit of an injury, and as long as he's able to fully practice by Friday, I'm confident playing him against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Moving on to Odell Beckham Jr. of the Los Angeles Rams. I understand many of us were expecting a greater performance last night on you know Tuesday Night Football, but unfortunately, OBJ wasn't able to put it together. I'm not too worried about him. I think he's a great overall wide receiver, takes on the easiest matchup at the position. That secondary has been in shambles for the last two seasons, to say the very least. Patrick Peterson isn't really contributing much. I mean, in the last three games, of course, those Chicago Bears weren't able to take advantage of it. 10 catches, 125. The two prior games, Pittsburgh, 23 receptions, 266 and a touchdown from their wide receiver core, while you know against the Detroit Lions, Minnesota struggled and of course gave up 17 receptions, 197 and a receiving touchdown. A lot of potential there. OBJ, in my opinion, not a bad play at all. Moving on to Michael Pittman Jr. Now, I have him at number 25, but now that I'm thinking about it, I think Michael Pittman Jr. could very easily be a top 19 receiver. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that he's going to get wide receiver one opportunity on top of the fact that Takes on the Arizona Cardinals. They're giving up the fifth most points to opposing wide receivers. Some of the recent performances, of course, we saw Amon Ross, St. Brown, and Josh Reynolds go for you know over 60 receiving yards. Both had themselves a receiving touchdown. Both each had over six receptions. I mean, that kind of performance from two you know mid-tier wide receivers is just unbelievable. They could not stop them. On top of that, the week before that, Cooper Cup 
Justin Jefferson, Odell Beckham Jr., they each scored in that contest against the Arizona Cardinals secondary. They'll have their hands full with Michael Pittman. The only thing is, Michael Pittman needs another wide receiver to compliment him. You know, T.Y. Hilton has to step up. The running game is not enough to get him open because we all know defenders want to typically double cover Michael Pittman and give him a tough time there. Moving on to Christian Kirk. On the other side of this matchup, the Arizona Cardinals wide receiver is in a pretty good position, mainly because of an injury that was sustained by Rondell Moore last week. Rondell Moore typically plays majority of his snaps from the slot position, and that is what he has in common with Christian Kirk. The fact of the matter is, in terms of overall snap percentages, both of them play in the slot position 77% of the time, which again is conflicting because there may be some opportunities that go to Christian Kirk while it may turn around and go to Rondell Moore. But if, in fact, we're in a you know, position where Rondell Moore is going to miss this upcoming week and Christian Kirk is purely going to play out of the slot position, then we're going to see a very similar performance. We'll see him get the nine catches, 94 yards, or something similar to that in which he's able to dominate this Indianapolis Colts secondary. Of course, Kenny Moore will probably be shadowing him all across the field. But as long as he's given the opportunity, I trust him. He played 96% of the snaps last week. I mean, he, I mean, prior to that, it was about 70, 74, sometimes a peak of 76. Really never saw the field that often, but with more opportunity on the field, I think Christian Kirk's, of course, another great player. Moving on to DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf, with the absence of Ty Lockett, sure got himself 12 targets, but only caught half of them. Only had 52 receiving yards. And is honestly, I mean, he, he got Jalen Ramsey. I don't know what else to say. That's purely what it was. He takes on Chicago. Their secondary is not the greatest. I mean, even when their secondary was fully healthy, they gave up 10 catches, 121, and two touchdowns to Devontae Adams. Of course, a different caliber of wide receiver, to say the very least, different caliber of quarterback. If we go ahead and swap those quarterbacks, we could see similar numbers. But as of right now, DK Metcalf, a great receiver. We're hoping that the matchup will serve in his best interest. Moving on to Devontae Parker, wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins, coming off of a great week. And to be honest, this last week, when he had himself a receiving touchdown, had himself 14.8 fantasy points. It wasn't the first time he's had himself a great game. In fact, in the last four contests that he's performed, he's been great overall, averaging 12.93 fantasy points per game and a half PPR. The fact of the matter is, it's going to be very difficult for the Miami Dolphins to run the ball in New Orleans. Of course, the New Orleans Saints, as we talk about for the last three years plus here, are one of the best run-stopping defenses. So where will that turn the Miami Dolphins offense? Of course, to Jalen Waddell. But then their secondary option there, Devontae Parker, who should be able to dominate on the outside for the Miami Dolphins. Moving on to A.J. Green, our number 29, another Arizona Cardinals wide receiver. They'll take on the Indianapolis Colts at home on Saturday. Now, the question is whether or not A.J. Green is up to the task at hand. To be honest, when I went and I found some of the stats in regards to A.J. Green and his performances throughout his career against the Indianapolis Colts, it was quite surprising. He's played against the Indianapolis Colts five times in his career. He's averaging 14.36 fantasy points per game against them. He's always surpassed 10 fantasy points in every contest, and not a single one of those performances was over 20 points. So it's not like one performance of 40 points has pretty much carried him, but he's found a lot of success against this franchise. And hopefully this week, We'll similarly see that kind of opportunity. But it's just a matter of whether or not, you know, he sees those targets. Eight targets, four catches, 64. You accompany that with a touchdown. We'll be happy with a 14-point fantasy performance out of A.J. Green. Is that a possibility? I'm thinking it's more closer to that 10, 11-point range uh, in a half PPR scoring format. We're not going to guarantee a touchdown, but we'll think, you know, the yardage, the receptions, it'll get us there. Moving on, we have Jarvis Landry at number 30. Jarvis Landry has been extremely consistent. When he has played with Baker Mayfield under center as of late, in the last three contests, he has seen 28 total targets. In those three games, he's averaging obviously 12 fantasy points per game because he's eclipsed 12 fantasy points per game in every single one of those contests. He takes on the Green Bay Packers, and though their defense is most likely you know, going to be in a situation where they're playing well, it's going to just be a matter of game script. The Green Bay Packers are going to score at will. And if and when they do, Baker Mayfield and Jarvis Landry will then have to respond. And how are they going to respond? They can't run the ball the entire game. They're going to have to throw, and they're going to have to get the ball to one of their playmakers. I think Jarvis Landry will have himself a great opportunity here. As long as it's closer to that 8 to 10 target range, he's in a great position for success this week. Moving on to Amari Cooper. Again, I don't really trust the Dallas Cowboys receiving options, though Amari Cooper, last time he took on the Washington football team in week 14, just a couple weeks back, had himself five catches on seven targets for 51 yards and a touchdown. I mean, 13.6 fantasy points. Am I drooling over that opportunity? No. And I don't think he has as much upside as some of these other wide receiver options, considering how many threats this offense truly has. For right now, Amari Cooper, you sit at number 31 because there is potential for you to get to that 10-point range. But again, it's, it's very risky. 
for those of us who are thinking of playing Dallas Cowboys prospects. Moving on to Darnell Mooney, our number 32. Darnell Mooney takes on the Seattle Seahawks. That secondary, of course, got torched last night by Cooper Cup, completely going for a 30 bomb. I mean, sure, Darnell Mooney is a great wide receiver. He'll most likely get Allen Robinson back this week, which will open up some more opportunity for this offense. I mean, uh, Cole Komet being a great receiving option, so is David Montgomery. That certainly plays a huge role into allowing him to, you know, kind of open up in this offense, get him involved in the running game, get him involved out of the backfield. Either way, with Jakeem Grant out, I think there is a conversation in which you just pretty much pivot Darnell Mooney to that role. And hopefully with more opportunity in that direction, I think Darnell Mooney steps up at least as a wide receiver three option. Moving on to Mike Williams. I don't really trust Mike Williams. He's had himself a couple good performances here and there, but typically when we want him to have himself, you know, explosive performances, you know, nothing's remotely even close to earlier this season. I mean, it was only just this last week that Keenan Allen was able to surpass Mike Williams' total fantasy points. I mean, that's how much of a lead Mike Williams had earlier this year of consecutive 20, 30 point performances, but he's fallen down to earth. He's come back to being the normal Mike Williams that we know and love. Uh, A nice six point wide receiver that has the potential because of the amount of opportunities they give him. I mean, again, this last week had himself an opportunity that ran that slant route like they always do. Literally, they've ran that slant route to Mike Williams, I think five or six times in the last four weeks. And he has not been able to score a single touchdown on that. But as long as the opportunity continues to knock, you know, there's a potential for it. Moving on, we go to Van Jefferson, wide receiver of the Los Angeles Rams. Listen, I think Van Jefferson's a great overall prospect. It's just a matter of whether or not he'll be able to just click and score that touchdown because that's all we need. I mean, obviously yesterday against the Seattle Seahawks did nothing. The three weeks prior was able to get himself a touchdown in every single game and that has pretty much saved his weeks. He's a deep threat receiver. And if we anticipate this defense, like we've seen in weeks past, the Minnesota Vikings not being able to stop opposing wide receivers, then by all means, I think Van Jefferson could catch one ball 50 yards and a touchdown and make his fantasy week in one play. Moving on to Terry McLaurin again. Terry McLaurin wasn't even on the list last week. As soon as I saw that he was going up against Darius Slay, I wanted nothing to do with it. Going into this week's matchup, of course, he will have his starting quarterback most likely back. He will take on the Dallas Cowboys defense. They give up a good, decent amount of points, but ultimately, I'm not too bought in on Terry McLaurin and his overall potential when I'm trying to make my championship Sunday game. Moving on to our final wide receiver, Laquan Treadwell. I talk about him literally every week. Not only as a wide receiver option to pick up off of waivers, but a guy that you could potentially start. They take on the New York Jets. I think the overall matchup lends to the idea that he could end up scoring a touchdown and finishing as a top 36 wide receiver. These are my week 16 wide receiver rankings for the 2021 fantasy football season. Thank you everybody for watching tomorrow. We will of course talk about quarterbacks and tight ends. Of course, top 16 at each position prior to the Thursday night game between the Tennessee Titans and San Francisco 49ers. I appreciate you guys coming out, supporting the channel, clicking the like button, subscribing, checking out Underdog Fantasy, and of course, using promo code Andrew today. Underdog Fantasy will be willing to match up to $100 of your first deposit. I appreciate you guys supporting me in all the variety of ways. Until tomorrow, thank you, and I'll see you guys. Peace. (laughs) 